We are live, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Thunderpop Podcast, episode 131, if I'm getting my numbers right. And tonight on TP Live and Thunderpop Podcast, I'm going to be joined by Matty Ice and Rod from the. Forget that name. Idiots on a mic podcast. I wanted to keep calling it Idiots on the Mic, which they are, you know, on the mic. Now I'll let them decide if they're idiots, but they're definitely <laughs> on the mic. But they're all, but their title is actually on a mic, uh, which they're also as well. They're gonna be joining me tonight. We're gonna be talking DC versus Marvel. How about that? DC versus Marvel, the long running debate on which is better. And I have a few thoughts on it. And I know that uh, Maddie and Rod have some thoughts on it too that they would like to uh, to discuss so we're going to talk about that our two guests tonight are coming in they're both based out of columbus ohio area they do their podcast there uh they're funny guys it's going to be a lot of fun we're also going to talk about wonder woman 1984 still scheduled for as as this started record as we started recording this live still scheduled for christmas release a christmas day release is that going to happen they're staying strong on that well, we'll talk about that, too, in our Thunder Take to open the show. Then we'll have a Greer Disagree. We're going to talk about Dexter coming back, uh, what that's going to be like, and some other stuff. we got a thoughts and advice to close out the show. We're going to talk about all those tricksters and thoughts and advice like Sasha Baron Cohen, Tom Green, Jackass, Pumped. we got something for them. We're going to talk about that as well. I'm Stephen Presley, and it's all coming up on this I call it the minute cast, not a broadcast, it's a minute cast. But <laughs> I see four eyeballs out there already. Thank you for joining us. Let's roll with our uh, opening credit and we'll get this going. Like here in a second, as soon as I can find that opening, the opening, the opening title. Yeah, here it goes. Okay, I lied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring in my guest here with me like that. There they are. And uh, I've got, got another layout. Let me try this one here. Especially for you guys tonight, our new layout that we had made for for three people, right? Oh, there. hit him! Hit him with it! Yeah, and then uh, we can uh, move it. Uh, up there. there, there we it go. Is. There like we go. Brady Bunch. Beautiful. Podcasting. I love it. I'll okay. tell you what, that intro is pretty legit. Let me tell you, That's nice. <laughs> that was <you>. slick. <laughs> you no, know, and I can't take full credit for it. I did. I did write the song, or I co-wrote the song. Uh, but I had a gentleman from the UK that put together all those great, amazing like video graphics. I get, I'm still, cause it, we started just doing the live stream a few weeks ago. I'm still get caught up in it myself. I'm watching it. And then I forget, mm -hmm. Oh shit, we got to do it. So like after it's <laughs> over, like I have done nothing for the next, like, Oh, I got to talk now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting there still going. It's like, Oh, Oh, so, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess we're doing a live stream here. So here we are. Um, really excited. I'm, okay. This is the first time we've used this particular layout. I'm checking it out a little bit. I see we got popcorn there. On one side, uh, that looks a little burnt. And then over on the other side, we've got a gold, the golden ticket. Get your tickets. Yeah, get your tickets. We got some uh, more popcorn, probably COVID laden, laden popcorn if it's at a movie theater currently right now. They put it in the butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they add a little COVID seasoning into that, into that yeah. buttered popcorn. But speaking of opening movie theaters now, we're going to segue because that's going to be a great segue into our thunder take where we're going to talk about wonder woman 1984 that's still holding strong for a christmas release now we know only a few movies that made it into theaters big movies that made it into theaters this year really after covid started in march 
movies started dropping like flies, postponing, rescheduling. You had Christopher Nolan that held on strong. He says, Tenet is still going to get a theatrical release. And he came through with his promise. Tenet didn't do so great. People just weren't ready to go back to the movies yet. They also released, released New Mutants, but I don't really even count New Mutants as a big movie. That was a movie that really probably wouldn't even have gotten a theatrical release had it not been for this year. Yeah. Um, they were, it was kind of almost like a, a guinea pig. It's like, let's put new mutants out there and see yeah. if we'll go see it because we don't want to put any of our good movies out right now. We don't want to waste a good movie. So let's put out new mutants. It's been on the shelf for a long time. Um, so they got that out. But Wonder Woman 1984, Inner Thunder Take, I want to ask you. Oh, by the way, I owe you guys an applause. You guys get an applause for joining us tonight. There you go. Oh, yeah. Normally, I would have done that. <laughs> Normally, I would have came in with that right away, but I'm still getting used to using a soundboard. When we did the audio version of this uh, podcast before live stream, when everything was done in real time, I would I would add the uh, sound bit, bites in in post. Right. So I was so used to it. Now I've got the soundboard. And so, but I forget to push the sounds. This <laughs> so new, I, age, this new yeah. age technology, man, it'll get you. Yeah. One of these days, it'll just be like a, um, the, the, the microchipped in my arm and I'll be able to just like, okay, applause, laugh track. Yeah. <laughs> Swiping my arm like this. Trying to get We're the not sound far effect. away. I'm sure Elon Musk will give us that at some point. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he's moving to Austin, by the way, to our, to my town uh, here in Austin. Hey. Oh, there you go. Moving to Tesla, uh, moving the Tesla operations or some of the Tesla operations here to Austin. Uh, we, we already got a few people in, by the way. We'll get to, to we'll get everybody in later uh, on comments portion of the show. But just to uh, get a couple of them, our friend Tester on YouTube tonight. And he says, got, got a wake up call from YouTube. I need nuclear coffee to wake up a bit or I can't follow anything that happens here. Uh, by the way, Tester's coming in from the UK. Oh, so okay. I think it's some ridiculous hour over there right now. And that's what he's talking about. Uh, he's, he's dropping some news on us too. Here's some news. There's a Battlestar Galactica movie coming, but also a separate non-movie related TV series. Oh, so I knew about the Battlestar Galactica series. I didn't, excuse me. I did not know that we were also going to get a movie and a series. So that's that is indeed huge huge news. Did either of you watch the the Battlestar Galactica from the early two thousands that was on the Sci Fi Channel? Uh, no, personally, I can't say it. But I will say this much about uh, TV shows being made into movies: is it's a it's a I don't know that it's been perfected yet, just because mm -hmm. casting from the TV show to movie is always adjusted. It's it's almost never the same people, and then you get into that situation where it's I spent potentially decades, uh, you know, investing in this character played by this person, and now I have to reestablish what I'm, what I know about this character because it may be played entirely different going forward. You know, yeah, it doesn't always transfer over, does it? No, no. And sometimes, sometimes they try to do it. They, years ago, they did an X Files movie after the series ended, didn't do so well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're doing, you know, they do kind of, kind of a different different scale but they do these reboots or, or revitalizations of shows and i think the ones that are done the best are the ones that stay closest to what the original did yeah so when That's, they did oh, the new sure. what's that for sure yeah yeah so like when they brought back x files in a, as a new series like as a limited series a few years ago that was very good i wanted more of that in fact but the actors didn't want to keep doing it um, they were going to keep doing it because they had really good ratings. They had really good reviews. The stories were really exciting, but uh, they, did, they didn't want to keep doing it um, and get back into that X-Files wormhole. But it was closer to the, to the original in terms of the, f the blueprint. Like the writing and, and things were ramped up for 2020 or for 20, well, it was 2018, I think, or 2017 when that was out. It was ramped up for a newer, more modern television audience. But it was still that same blueprint, same the feel, the same style. So another, this is a crazy example, but Say by the Bell is yeah. going to be revitalized. <laughs> they just dropped a trailer the other day, yeah. and most everyone's coming back except for obviously Screech, who's in prison somewhere. Oh. Um, <laughs> so he's not going to be back for that. He maybe he gets some stars, man. <laughs> yeah. Now I, and I'm proposing they do a 
show with all the celebrities now that are in prison. They do a reality show because there's a hit show right there for like a Netflix celebrities in prison. You get Actually, shocked. That's not a thing yet. <laughs> yeah. You get screech. You got Bill Cosby. You got Becky from full house. Oh, yeah. You got who else is there? Um, there's some others. I, I just can't think of them all right now, but there's, Oh, well, uh, Masterson from this, that 70 show could be, could be next. So you, yeah. you could do celebrities in prison with all these people. It would be like big brother, behind, celebrity, big brother behind bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there just like a, a specific prison that like all these celebrities are going to it's somewhere in Hollywood, California, I imagine. They nice comfy nice beds, beds, plasma yeah. TVs. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've wondered that I'm trying to think who was the, the celebrity that was in jail for a while. Oh, um, Chong from Cheech and Chong had talked yeah. about when he was on the Joe Rogan show. I talked about when he was in prison and how it was actually really like for him, it was like being in a country club. He said, yeah, you're on the computer all day. You, uh, you lift weights, you eat, then you get back on the computer <laughs> for him, at least in his experience, he said that there were some guys that were in jail with him. They didn't want to get out because of, and I'm not going out and recommending people <laughs> try it. <laughs> Because you won't right. get sent to that cushiony jail. Yeah. Three <laughs> hots in a cot. That's all you need. Yeah. Probably gonna be very different if one of us, if it happened to one of us. Oh, for sure. We wouldn't have that same experience. Um, okay. So back up. Say by the bell. I get off subject so bad. That I've got <laughs> people watching me live now. So I've got to be careful. I can see the eyeballs. I know people are watching this. Okay. Uh -huh. So say by the bell coming back. This is a good example of that where they don't. I don't know if they're doing it right because the original show was shot on a sound stage, three camera sitcom, old, old school sitcom style with a laugh track. And it was a little bit more done. Like, you know, those, those sitcoms from the eighties and nineties where there's right. a laugh track and it's in that, mm -hmm. in that harsh lighting studio set. Um, everything's kind of like built kind of small and tiny, but it looks big on camera. Anyway, you have those, three camera sitcom shows, you still have some, they're still around. They're not, they're not, you know, there's still some on TV today. They're not as popular as they once were, once were, but they bring back a show like that in the revitalization, looking more like a live action, you know, movie. There's no, there appears to be no laugh track. I think there's a little more drama interjected into it. There's still some of the cheesiness there, but it's not the exact same formula. So I don't know for, for the audience if it's going to work as well. Yeah, I feel like uh, in order for the nostalgia of those things to work, like you're saying, you need to you need to revert to that original formula because people who grew up watching that show, if I mean, you're going to sit there and you're going to tweak it and to the point where it's it may not even be the same show. OK, you cast the same people, you know, w with the exception of the ones that are, are, uh, are in prison Uh and, and then the whole concept kind of goes out the window and it's, are you even creating what you intended to create in the first place? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you now get back to wonder woman, 1984 planning on a still planning on the Christmas day release. Uh, they're holding strong and Patty Jenkins, who's the director of that movie is very pro theatrical release, much like Christopher Dolan is. She's an advocate advocate for that. What I'm asking you guys right now, are they going to make that? goal to getting it out on christmas you want to take that one rob yeah i think i got this one um how, how did the other two do that were released that uh, uh not well i'm assuming yeah tenant was a was a bust mostly um uh, from what i understand the numbers were not good for tenant mm -hmm. it will it will get some of that back in streaming but uh th because they didn't wait on it like james bond waited black widow mm -hmm. waited they're still on the shelf right now um so those guys waited. Some of them went straight to streaming, like coming to America is going to get a straight to streaming release in December on Amazon prime. Um, some others that they're going streaming route The bill and Ted did a little bit of both, which I think is the best, actually the best, what tenant should have done was doing a hybrid where they released in as many theaters as they could come out in. And then simultaneously still had a streaming release or, or a, a premium video on demand release. So where you had the option, if mm. you weren't ready, if there was no theaters open in your city, or if you just weren't comfortable with going back to the theater and you really wanted to see that movie, you had the option to stay at home and watching it. And I think that's what they should have done with Tenet. 
Uh, New Mutants wasn't expected. See, I, I don't understand. What's that? Oh, I was saying, yeah, I don't understand why they don't, don't take that approach anyway, because release as much as you can. And I think, too, uh, I know in Ohio, you're starting to see the number of COVID cases go up and everything. And you wouldn't know it unless you watch the news or something like that. And I think it's just because people are tired of it. They're, it's, um, I'm not to yeah. take anything away, not from the seriousness of it or anything like that, but the perception is, okay, I'm tired of being on all day. I want to go out. I think if they if they put it out in theaters near Christmas, I think people are eager to go out. They're going to see it. Um, I think it kind of depends, too, on the restrictions of the theaters, too, because if theaters mm-hmm. only allowing a certain number of people, and it might not be successful. So that's why you, you then go to the hybrid as well. So people who maybe can't get the ticket or just don't want to go out because of COVID, you're going to get it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, w- I will have to also note that Mulan not did, didn't did not do so well uh doing a similar type of you know process uh by doing it with mm-hmm. a release on theaters and uh well actually no Mulan a backup Mulan was just PVOD only did not do so well but Bill and Ted that did the PVOD and the theaters exceeded the expectations of what it was supposed to do so um so I yeah I like the hybrid method I think that that might be something mm-hmm. they might want to consider with the Wonder Woman because we don't know what December is going to look like. I think they're just going to run and move if things aren't where they want it to be by mid November. I think they're going to go and they're going to go move it again. And I think it'll end up being back in the, another like next summer type of thing or fall of next year. Um, I don't think because I think Patty Jenkins is really adamant about it being theatrical. It's a theater, it's a cinematic theatrical release. Um, so we'll we'll see we'll see on this. Uh, is this a movie y'all would be excited to see? Yeah, I'm Absolutely. interested. I think I, I think the first one had a lot of success, and and mm-hmm. to k- kind of back up just to touch on on your question, mm-hmm. uh, I I think the hybrid thing is just a way to usher in a new era where it, we go digital for a majority of releases. And, yeah, and and you see like. It, the the technology with TVs anymore it's so accessible they're so cheap you can get a you know a 55 60 inch TV for three four hundred dollars in some cases so yeah. what what you're losing in theater value you can you can kind of gain on on the other end and just be in the comfort of your own home get some popcorn and, and do that so I wouldn't be surprised if moving forward you know especially with the continuation of, of COVID that uh, this, like I say, in this hybrid, just kind of ushers in a new age of of movie theaters kind of going by the wayside and, and digital copies kind of being the thing. But I I'm excited for for Wonder Woman. I think the first one had a lot of success, and it's kind of really revitalized the the DC universe and where where they intend to go. I think. Yeah, yeah, and of course we're gonna get into that here in a short bit, uh, talking about DC versus Marvel and who's winning right now. Um, so yeah, and a legendary Laura coming to us from somewhere. I'm not sure where she's at tonight, but legendary Laura says our area is doing drive-in movies. Uh, making a comeback. Yeah. Uh, She's actually over on, I think YouTube, uh, making that comment. Um, thank you, Laura. Uh, yeah. Drive-in movies making a comeback this year, by the way, I don't know if I brought this up yet, but this year drive-in movie movies that are released in drive-in movie theaters will be eligible for the first time, I think, ever, or at least in decades, will be eligible for Oscar contention. Oh, and- I, I, I like the I like the drive in idea. I, I, you know, it, it kind of takes away from my theory. We're reverting instead of actually going forward to the to the digital age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think well, you're getting a little nostalgia there, too. And you're getting the nostalgia and you're getting the younger generation, too, that wants to see these movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the the drive-ins a throwback. You know, it's like vinyl coming back. Vinyl sales, I think last year, for the first time in I don't know how many decades, surpassed CD sales. The sales of vinyl. Yeah, uh, I know my girlfriend personally. She's a big vinyl fan, and it, mm-hmm. it, the sound quality is the same. But it, the, there is just a nostalgia value, which is kind of funny because like our generation. We didn't grow up with vinyls. It was CDs and everything past that. So yeah. 
to to have nostalgia for something that we weren't even really a part of is kind of a weird concept too. Yeah, that's something that's kind of been a phenomenon for a long time where people, uh, the joke, the meme that's always floated around was the hipster at a coffee shop that takes a typewriter out of his bag <laughs> and starts knocking out some, some homework on his typewriter <laughs> just because it's kind of ironic and, and you know, so that's kind of the, vinyl. I like, I think there's an experience with it for me. Um, and there are people that are vinyl advocates that will blow up our inbox later and tell us why they're good. But I know that there's a, there's a certain purity to it where with digital, you know, di same thing with film to digital people that are advocates for film will tell you there's a certain, you know, this certain, certain feel and vibe that comes with a film opposed to just something that's crispy clean, like digital. Um, so anyway, yeah, there's there's that. What do you think uh, is going to be the end game? Do you think movie theaters are going to just be downsized, that they're going to still be around? Or do you think that movie theaters are, are going to be completely just like shuttered? Um, do you think it's going to go to just like maybe boutique movie theaters, like small ones? Yeah, no, I, I, I think the uh, like the small town theaters. Sorry, I'm going to cut you off there. But, no, you're good, uh, buddy. Like the I'll small town after. theaters. The, the just reach over in his box. Yeah, yeah just, just go ahead and slap it out of here. Yeah, <laughs> him on the head. We can try to get over to the talk there, and that would be amazing if we could figure out an effect to where it just makes just it look come like our down arm, and our arm is coming like through the window. Just push his screen off of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, now I want to start playing with the dynamic of this, yeah. this layout and figuring out ways we can kind of push the envelope on it a little bit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> No, you're good. You're good. This, hey, believe me, this format for us is is just as amusing. And you you've been doing it a, a little bit longer than us. So I mean, we, we do the the audio only stuff. And I've got two is, weeks on you. I've got two weeks on you. So I'm I'm a veteran. I'm <laughs> yeah, veteran. Right. That's, hey, in the in the podcasting game, that is, I mean, that could easily <laughs> consider you veteran. In podcasting years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's about that's about seventeen years in podcasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, and you had a great thought that was going to be amazing, and then I, I hit like I, I'm famous and notorious for doing. I cut you off, and now you won't be able to remember what you were going to say. Yeah. Uh, the the boutique theaters, the smaller theaters. Yeah. Uh, I I think that's that's the experience for me. I mean, yeah. Like we we went to one. We saw 1917 in a in a local theater by us, mm -hmm. and it's, I mean, you got these high school kids working, which you're going to get that in any theater you go to. Mm -hmm. uh you know they're just going hanging out they're selling brews at the at the concessions grab a couple of brews. can <laughs> yeah just grab a couple <laughs> brews go sit down and watch a movie Are you kidding me that's the way to do it well and think about the the states that have legalization of marijuana now colorado i believe uh washington oregon maybe uh, california of course they Illinois. can start having weed free if they haven't already done this Here's an idea. You can cut the check to me and send it to me tomorrow. <laughs> weed, weed theaters or marijuana based theaters. 3D movies would be phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the revitalization of movie theaters right there is uh, yeah. marijuana friendly movie theaters where they sell weed. At, they sell like uh, um, edibles and uh, we'll go ahead and trademark that right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you show 3D movies. I don't oh, want to know movie. what the cost of an edible would be at a movie theater because popcorn alone is like ninety dollars. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the other thing with movie theaters is a lot of people would have told you that they were already done with them pre-pandemic because they were too expensive, especially if you have a family of four, um, taking them all out to the movies and getting uh, the food and the drink, and then. In my case that'll never be a problem because I always snuck in food to the theater. Oh yeah. You really discover your your skill set as a smuggler when you go to movie theaters. <laughs> yeah, I was the well, Han Solo and Chewbacca of, of movie uh, yeah. theater, food into we, theater. We were lucky enough that uh, Maddie and I, whenever we go to the movie theater, there's actually a bar right next to it, so you can eat your food, drink a few beers, then go in and see the movies. We did that during Black Panther, and that was a wild time. That's yeah, a few I, beers was it's your low ball in that a few beers there, but <laughs> so you've just been a little bit, yeah, kind of uh, yeah. yeah. Get down a few notches there a little bit. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, the brewery, the brewery, and they're all over the brewery movie theater. The brewery style movie theater is popping up all over the country now, mm-hmm. and it's it's done quite well. So that will that that there alone will keep movie theaters uh, alive because people, especially after this COVID thing is really over, uh, people are going to be dying to get out and doing whatever, um, a trampoline gym, uh, whatever, <laughs> McDonald's, whatever. Just yeah. get me out of the house. Uh, if you can show me a bar in a movie theater, I'm there. If it's if it's combined and, and, and you know together, uh, I'm in. And I, I I got an idea about that too. With um, I think movie theaters are going to stick around, especially with them adding, you know, what's the alcoholic slushies we have at some of our movie theaters oh. here and. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Um, <laughs> oh, no, well, I'm gonna have to get to Ohio here soon. Yeah, yeah hey, absolutely. come on down. <laughs> I think tickets are uh, right now too. It's uh, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. like when you're asked, when you think about like, all right, I need a date night. I need to take my significant other, girlfriend, wife, whatever, out. Right? What's the first thing that comes to mind? And us as guys, we're lazy for the most part. Dinner and a movie, easy day. And you know what? That's always going to be the staple for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. First, first thought that comes to mind is whatever she tells me. So <laughs> I'm even further behind than you. <laughs> yeah. Valid point there. Um, um, yeah, so there it is. One Woman 1984. Right? Kind of sounds like we're on a fence whether that's going to happen. But if it does happen, maybe in a hybrid style would be a good mm-hmm. idea. Uh, I personally think it won't. Ha- I don't think it's going to happen. And I'll tell you, I think it's because we're going to hit flu season. I think there's there's spikes, like you said, are happening in, mm-hmm. in many places in the country. I think that they're going to be worried about putting out a, such a big movie to put out in the middle of a pandemic and for the risk of it bombing. I think even if they held off until May, um, it's bad for movie theaters because they really want the movie. They really want those mm-hmm. blockbuster movies back in their in their theaters it's going to be the kind of the end of them by not getting that movie at the end of the year, but we'll see what happens now. Also too, to it's going to go along with that. I mean, it's, it's a, what a Christmas release is, is the yeah. intention holiday season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you're going to be competing with traveling for the holidays. You're going to be competing with COVID and you're going to be, you know, competing with d- depending on where you are in the country, any sort of, you know, weather related issues. So I think the hybrid is the way to go because, you know, you, you, there is purity. I hope movie theaters don't go away. I'm not a huge movie theater goer, but there is purity and, you know, uh, really appreciating the art and everything that goes into it when you see that movie in, in theater. Um, but I think they have to go hybrid to be as Is there even anything, anything else coming out around that I, time? That's what I was, I was thinking is I'm wondering. Hallmark movies. Does, it probably, no, it probably <laughs> Hallmark movies actually. In heavy doses. It probably doesn't have it probably doesn't have a um, any competition. So that's one thing it does have to its advantage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you do start to see like, well, and people have, I'll tell you another thing that could work to your advantage. It was, one of you mentioned it earlier, COVID fatigue. Mm-hmm. People are going back out and, and starting to do maskless events. And um, so I, my, one of my businesses was, I was a DJ for special events. I did DJ and lighting for special events uh, pre COVID I used to do it when there was events to do. Um, and all, you know, all our weddings and events moved off the calendar for 2020, except for two that held on for November. And those two events are still going to happen. They're still scheduled for November. They gave me the opportunity of the option to, to back out. And I decided to go ahead with doing both of them. But one of them is planning on doing a maskless wedding in late November in a tent. Um, with about 50 people. And that's something that you might not have heard of, heard of happening. It would have been unheard of just about two or three months ago, but because of, I think because of COVID fatigue, people are saying, ah, I just really want to get back out and get to doing some normal stuff. I'm kind of tired of this. Yeah. We actually just went to a wedding where they said you had to wear a mask yeah. during the whole entire reception. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you that was not enforced at, at all. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so, I mean, and there was probably hundred and, 100 120 people there too so mm-hmm. i think you're right yeah so yeah yeah and that's the thing is you just kind of say okay masks are required but then come on people mm-hmm. start, i mean yeah. you're gonna you're gonna drink <laughs> you could put the mask 
they're back on every time. <laughs> still, re still recovering. <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, you could have that special, like a special order of mask that has like the big straw on it. That's there's an idea, yeah. Glass, and you just walk around with that, and you're constantly just, you know, and it's like <laughs> weird, like tubes coming out of your mask uh, the whole night, and then you'd have to take off that bottle and hand it to them for a refill, and you tie it back on, and you just walk around with it. I don't know. It's probably. I bet you somewhere on like what's that that Wish app. Oh, oh for sure. Oh, God, that's a wild place to be. <laughs> yeah, that's that's terrifying. The Wish app, I guarantee you, right now has that. Oh, Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I would not doubt that for one second. It's nineteen it's, or nine bucks right now on on the Wish. App. <laughs> yeah, you'll get it in seventeen weeks. <laughs> yeah, you'll order it now. You'll get it in seventeen weeks, and the pandemic would be over by then. But you can yeah. have it as a kind of a, a parting gift. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Wish, Wish, ha Wish. By the way, is the now the modern day version of uh, that that the uh, Sky Mall magazine that used oh, to have. For sure. And I flew a lot for work uh, a couple of years ago. I haven't been not flying, obviously, this year. Um, and I was disappointed because Sky Mall magazine, you can't find it anymore. Have you seen it lately? No, I, I don't I, even I, know what that is. <laughs> I, travel, I travel quite a bit for, for work currently. Obviously, this is mm -hmm. a, a yeah. hotel room. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're traveling right now. Mm -hmm. you're, out, you're out of state. Uh, and uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. It's it's probably been a year or two since I've actually seen it, and it's I think it's only been on like international flights that I've really seen it too. Yeah, the best way to kind of explain Skyball is that it's it's basically that that app, that Wish app, but in, in hard print, uh, in a catalog form. It's everything that you never realized that you didn't need. Like it's it's just a random collection of things that you're like, oh. This piqued my interest because I'm on a nine hour flight to, you know, Spain. Mm -hmm. However, I will never buy this <laughs> for myself for any reason. It's, uh, I would say Sky Mall is a little classier than Wish App. Oh, for sure. For yeah, sure. it is. <laughs> classier version of it. I didn't know there was anything classy about the Wish App. <laughs> There's nothing on the ads that I see. Nothing. <laughs> you're, you're, in, you're, in, you're in the wrong categories. That's why. Oh, there's more categories. <laughs> like, pizza pizza sweatsuits with pizzas all over it um i can get into i mean it, it just goes we can pull it up later we can get into more of the wish app <laughs> yeah and kind of talk about what what's going on over the wish app and there's a lot going on with the wish app another thing there's a lot going on and this is a saga that's been going on for decades the dc versus marvel argument and which is better and it, you know the argument has gone kind of back and forth over the years um, and obviously in recent years, it shifted to being more of an argument about the movies, the cinematic, because that's been more in the focus of the mainstream audience than the comic books years ago when people had, and the, and the comic books, the really diehard fans of DC Marvel will still, you know, argue based on the comic books and the movies, but a larger portion of the audience would have that debate on the movies and the TV shows um, a little bit on, on the success of those movies, but also on the content of those movies. Um, so that's wh where's your, where are you guys on the DC Marvel argument, DC versus Marvel argument? All right, I'll go ahead and take this. I'll uh, <laughs> and that's take a big, this off that's here. That's a big loss <laughs> there. I'm kind of throwing up. A... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> open-ended. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to ride the fence too much on this, but uh, a big, big Marvel fan, just mainly because the movies is what really got me into everything. The Marvel movies, uh, when Iron Man came out, when they started going through the Infinity War saga, I started uh, kind of going through and listening to different, uh, different comic books. I think uh, and there's another YouTube channel that really like he'll talk through the comics as they're going on. Mm -hmm. And then from the Marvel version from the Marvel comics, I actually started going and clicking on some of the other links and having the DC comics read to me and stuff. So I got to go with the Marvel um, just because I think it's done a better job recently with the, the movie franchises, but I can definitely see DC is dark and I like it and there's definitely a place for it. So we got Maddie. Yeah. I think it really depends on who you are. Like me personally, I, I, I'm a big advocate of the comedy and, and things like that. And the way that Marvel has intertwined that into their movie, not only their movies, but in, in their comics as well. Uh, you don't necessarily get that same 
uh, that same vibe or that same feeling in in the DC comics. Now they've started to do it a little bit. They kind of interjected some in, uh, you know, Justice League, um, you know, a little bit in like Wonder Woman and things like that. I'm interested to see how they're going to do moving forward. Uh, I think they're really going to kind of take the formula from Marvel and, and run with it in terms of, okay, it's serious, but at, at the end of the day, you know, you've got those characters like you know, utilize utilize the Flash and how he's kind of quick-witted and things like that is almost similar to a Spider-Man in that sense. Um, but I, I got to say Marvel as well myself, just because uh, from from top to bottom, like you said, it, I think it's kind of recency bias because the movies are at the forefront of, of everything right now in terms of the two franchises. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know kind of kind of to his point just the way they've gone you know clear from iron man all the way to where they ended is just a a phenomenal i don't i don't think we'll see that for you know another decade before we even start to see those kind of really intertwined together like that again to where everything that happened from movie one led all the way up to what happened you know at the end of that uh you know phase three or phase four whatever they were calling it by the end of it and to say this too, that uh, Marvel actually like made me more of a fan of DC as well. Cause like I said, the more I watched the Marvel stuff, the more I looked into the comics for that. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, let me see that, you know, let me see what this and this story is and, and that sort of thing. So uh, they go hand in hand no matter what. Yeah. I mean, very rarely do I meet in the world. Okay. Another IP versus IP debate that has gone on for decades has been Star Wars versus Star Trek. And those fans that go after each other in the form of memes, um, there's little digs that are done with each other on Twitter uh, with you know William Shatner digging on Mark Hamill. And there was that commercial that just came out about a yeah. month ago with uh, with Picard and Luke Skywalker. Patrick, yeah, Patrick Stewart and Patrick Stewart. Uh, Mark Hamill. Yeah. Mark Hamill, where they're... They're starting. They're playing off of that whole rivalry between Star Wars and Star Trek. So that same thing with Marvel and DC. There's definitely a, a heated rivalry. Like whenever I post anything on social media that is about putting those two versus each other, it the news feed blows up more than anything else I post. Even cute pictures of my son or of our dog, they get a lot of comments. I mean, if I put something up of me, I might get one person that might give it a like, but who cares? <laughs> But Thanks, I mean, mom. yeah, yeah, hi, yeah. Mom, mom, <laughs> she'll, she'll comment on it or she'll like it, uh, but not even a heart. I just get a thumbs up. That's it. yeah, <laughs> mom. But uh, our baby Yoda meme will do really well, get a lot of a lot of attention to, or at least one time it was a, it was a thing that we get a lot of attention. Yeah. But the Marvel DC thing always blows up my newsfeed and goes viral every time. If I want to troll the audience, it's the it's the poli- political debate of pop culture yes absolutely the other thing that blows up a news feed is trump haters versus trump supporters so that's the same thing marvel dc will blow up a news feed like nothing else and so that there is a heated passionate debate but one of the things that you what you brought up is true though unlike the star wars star trek where there's some kind of more you know kind of separated from each other Mm mm-hmm People that like Marvel movies still participate in DC movies. And mm-hmm. generally they read both comics, even though they had a favorite between the two. If you're a fan of the superheroes, if you're a fan of the capes, you're a fan of, you like to watch both and you root for both to, to turn out good content, I think. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Like, I, And that's not, you know, in me choosing Marvel, that's not a knock on DC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I grew up a Superman fan. I have a Superman tattoo, uh, so nice. he's he's one of my favorite characters. Will be one of my favorite characters, and I think, uh, especially now with them casting Henry Cavill, this I mean, this man looks like Superman. Like it, it, they took him directly from the comics and they yeah. put him on the screen, and I I think they couldn't have done a better better casting job, and I that's part of it too is i don't want dc to fail because i think there are a lot of good story arcs that that go along with that so many it, yeah and it's just they have to draw that from the comics i i think they've made some uh 
casting mistakes. I wasn't a huge fan of Ezra Miller as the Flash mm-hmm. in Justice League. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I to go with that though, I really supported uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I think he did a fantastic job, and yeah. he's another what a beautiful one of those. man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, and, ma- he made Aquaman his own. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Nobody and, else can play it right now except no, him. Mm-hmm. Just no, like, and just like Robert Downey Jr. with Iron Man would be too much for someone else to come in and do that right now. Because that was him. That was, yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. was Robert Downey Jr. The, the yeah. embodiment of Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> if I was a big actor in Hollywood right now and I was called to say, would you want to do Iron? I would hang out before they even said man. Nope. I, I, I might th- I might take a shot at that Iron Fist, though. I don't think they could have done worse than that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let's can we can we get into that for a minute? How Marvel <laughs> really hasn't done too well with their TV, TV shows, shows whereas now. DC has done a phenomenal job with their TV shows. Well, it's a worthy it's a worthy uh discussion. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. Well, uh, I wouldn't say phenomenal. I think Flash and Arrow have had a, you know astounding success for the DC. Mm-hmm. But then they I mean they did Legends, which I like what they did. You know, they it was entertaining. Wanted, yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I think a lot. You know, you look back when Guardians of the Galaxy was announced. I think at first people were kind of scratching their heads. Yeah. But, but well, granted, Guardians had a lot more success than I think DC uh, Legends of Tomorrow did. But yeah. I think they, I think they kind of try to take that that same approach in. Let's kind of you know go out and get something that is is going to be more you know sci-fi tra- time travel thing like that like and take it away from just earth. So I, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of liked that approach. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Supergirl, um, I think it had success early on, but you see after, after flash and arrow, it kind of seems like they've slowed down a little bit. Um, and, but I, I think that's with a lot of the CW shows, you just kind of see the production value go down each time they, they bring in a new show. Cause if you look at like flash and arrow, those, that was like the brainchild there when they first started doing the DC stuff. And then from there, it's just, you just watch the production value. I don't know if it just, they weren't putting as much money into it or they stretched out too far or what, but you just kind of see it on a downhill slope. But, Still better than the Marvel shows on it, except for Daredevil. <laughs> I did, I did like Daredevil. Oh yeah, absolutely. Took, absolutely. Daredevil took too long for me to get into. I never really got past the first episode or two. Maybe it's just because I'm impatient. I don't know. Well, that's because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, and I know a lot of people enjoyed The Punisher on Netflix. Yeah, also. I, yeah, I did too. And I, mm-hmm. I like that's a, absolutely and again that's one thing that marvel does that's so excellent is they introduce the punisher in the second season of daredevil mm-hmm. and then they yeah. kind of gave his backstory and then they gave him his own show so they established him you get his backstory without this long drawn out story arc and then you plug him in and you get to know more about him you know you learn more about his main story arc throughout an entire season yeah i think i think the casting for the punisher was on point to spot on yeah oh absolutely they they really got that down perfect timing was perfect for everything on that show mm. um and i think out of all the marvel shows on netflix it's the most like well daredevil actually i'll take that back daredevil is the most likely to get revitalized in some mm-hmm. fresh in some fashion whether it's brought into the movie universe or whether it's it gets another series uh and i think the 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 non-compete timeline has already passed on i know daredevil where there, there was a window where they couldn't do any more daredevil for a certain amount of time after it was canceled by netflix and mm-hmm. now i think that window is passed so i think it's open fair game for them to do something with the daredevil character and then the others will come along right behind that including the punisher um so we'll see we'll see what happens um dc better has a better history with tv i would agree with that a longer span of years of mm-hmm. doing popular dc based tv shows you can go back to smallville which had a huge audience um cult following mm-hmm. um, and we'll probably you know we saw smallville brought back in to the infinite earth storyline that was on the cw mm-hmm. yes Earths. then you've got of course the flash has been a huge show yep. um and they go a little rom-com with some of their tv shows but that fits the that the audience for that 
CW type of demographic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they've done quite the infinite earths thing was really good for them. That did really well. And that was a good testing ground for the idea of doing the multiverse in DC that gave them an opportunity. So historically you can even go back to the nineties where it's not a typical type of superhero show, but Lois and Clark very popular had a huge cult following uh, back in the nineties. Um, so that's another good example. There has been talk of a Lois and Clark revitalization of doing a sequel series with Lois and Clark. I know they've been pushing for that for quite a while. It may eventually happen. Um, so s- several years of really good. And then you go back to sixties, Batman <laughs> the first DC TV show that most people can, can think of. Mm-hmm. If you go back and say, what was the earliest superhero show that you can remember? Most people might say, oh, yeah, that 60s, that Batman, that can't be 60s Batman. Most people might say that there was probably there was TV stuff in superhero world before that. But that's definitely the one most people know or remember in pop culture. Um, So TV for DC has been great for many years. Wonder Woman with Linda Carter, huge in the 70s and 90s. There was one exception and Marvel was off the radar for TV for many years they tried it many times and failed. They had a Captain America TV show in the late 70s. It was a flop. They did a Spider-Man TV show. And this is that we were talking about how it looks like they cut back and kind of skimp on budget with CW shows. Like as they get further in, they kind of start to look like they're kind of cutting cutting some uh, money on, on budget. Yeah. That's been a notorious thing with superhero shows and TV for years. And that's the problem with superhero shows in TV. If they're on network TV, if the networks start penny pension, that's an issue. And that's happened with the, with the uh, Spider-Man TV series back in the seventies, that show was a huge hit, had a big cult following. And then the network started cutting more and more on the budget of that show. Mm-hmm. And you go back and watch some of the clips on YouTube. It's hilarious like with the climb the building and it's obvious that like he's climbing, he's basically crawling on the ground laying and, down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all, it's all laying down. It's all camera tricks. <laughs> it, it's pretty hilarious to see some of this. They tried to pass off. They didn't have the CGI back then. Cause you can do, I mean, a guy on his iPhone now can knock out a superhero TV show for you. And about a couple of, give him a couple hours in an iPhone uh, with a couple of apps. A guy can knock out a TV show that looks much better than what they, than anything back in the seventies. Mm. Yeah, like for sure. Visual effects. <laughs> That's um, how we make the promo for our show. So we, yeah, yeah, we get exactly. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. See, we see the <laughs> example made right there. So um, I think in the movie cinematic, obviously, Marvel has dominated. Yeah, by far. Dominate. I mean, not even not even close. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's like this for DC when it comes to cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> But they're it's turning they're turning the corner. Mm-hmm. Aquaman was satisfying, the standalone Aquaman movie. I liked Shazam. I thought Shazam was a was a promising offering. It wasn't. It wasn't was great. Yeah, uh, yeah. I did enjoy that. Yeah. Wonder Woman, outstanding. I mm-hmm. didn't love. I didn't love the the ending. I thought the villain was could have been uh, a little bit mm-hmm. better. And that's been a problem with a lot of DC movies recently have been the villains, but it was a, but I mean, they've got Gal Gadot. You're talking about uh, Henry Cavill being the perfect Superman, which he is for, yes. for, for modern day times. He is. And by the way, I saw Henry Cavill in Enola Holmes where he plays Sherlock Holmes. It's a, yeah. it's a movie on Netflix right now. It's doing really, mm-hmm. really well. They're talking about making more of them. He plays Sherlock Holmes in that movie. And I watched that movie with my wife. It's a good movie, good movie to watch with the wife. And we were watching it and she was like, Sherlock Holmes is ripped in this movie. I said, honey, that's, that's Henry Cavill. He's, he's Superman. He's the man of steel. And yeah, he's like still bulked up like Superman. And he's in the, he's in the other series on Netflix right now. Uh, So he, he's bulked up for that show as well. But I mean, he's still man of steel bulked up, but like in a Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes suit. And you could tell, I mean, he's like, that suit is like about to rip. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah, I I was reading uh just some like movie trivia or TV trivia, and they were talking about his his leather suit for The Witcher, uh, which is on Netflix. Yeah, uh, he kept like ripping it, like it was it was like rubbing against him so much, and it would like Good for rip. him. Just, I, <laughs> I what know. a problem! What a problem to have! Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, 
you could just stretch. Like if you wanted to show off, you could just go out like to the bars, you know, if you want to show off the ladies. Yeah. Oh, I got to yawn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Off. See, when I do that, it's more like uh, Chris Farley and Tommy Boy when he's got the little the, the yeah. Little <laughs> yes. I, I go I go to stretch and I'm like, oh, what you looking at my gut for, ladies? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> also, Chris Farley in the Chippendale, uh, famous Chippendale. Yeah, 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 with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. So yeah, I mean, he really wants to show off. You know, all of a sudden, he <laughs> bare chest is hanging out of his shirt, like he stretches and everything rips open. And it's like, uh, I, anybody got a shirt I can borrow? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I just ripped my shirt. I ripped. My yeah. shirt. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll yeah. leave if I have to. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So he's like totally ripped. He's a perfect Superman, but sometimes it's a liability when he's other in other roles because he was very good in Enola Holmes as Sherlock Holmes. He was very likable, but he's obviously like a little bulked up for, for a Sherlock Holmes movie. Now, now let me, uh, this is your show, but let me pose this question to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think is the situation with the Joker in the DC universe? You mean with the uh, walking feet? Yeah. I mean, they're not, it doesn't even sound like it's actually going to be attached from my understanding. It's always been my belief that it wasn't, that it was mm -hmm. going to be its own thing. It's attached. Uh, that's not attached to, and they're doing, you know, multiverse is coming. It's coming for both DC and Marvel. And you could interject that into the, 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 the argument right now, the DC versus Marvel. So, the point is Marvel's dominated for over a decade or over 20 years. They've dominated movies. As you go back to X-Men, you can even go back to the X-Men. The, the X-Men movies also have terrific, some terrific offerings. So, and, and also a Wolverine, you can go back to Wolverine. So mm -hmm. Logan, those are also Marvel movies, even though they're not a part of Marvel studios, those are Marvel characters. So, you go into all that, and then uh, you had the early Spider-Man movies, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. So you can go back two decades on Marvel dominating in movies. DC stumbled quite a bit. They had a, they tried to bring back Superman with Superman Returns. Huh. That was that. Then they come back, and they Man of Steel is a good offering, but then they kind of ruined it with with Justice League. Now yeah. now they're turning the corner again, and they look like they're they're gaining ground. They've had a better pandemic. Than Marvel, because all Marvel has had to deal with most of mostly what's happened. With Marvel has just been their movies getting delayed, but DC they had one movie getting delayed, but they've had all these exciting announcements about the multiverse coming, Michael Keaton coming back. It was just a, it's not official, but it's been announced that it looks like Michael Keaton's going to come back and do Batman Beyond for a limited series. That would be awesome. So be it's been nothing but good news for 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 DC. And nothing but bad news for Marvel lately. So things are turning the corner. And at the start of this, I had a good point, and I can't remember what it was. So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. I, I think part of the thing for me, too, is DC has struggled a lot. And even just casting Batman. I mean, how many, how many different Batmans have we seen over even yeah. just the past decade, two decades, you know? And then it's like... Okay, so we get we get Ben Affleck, and now immediately Ben Affleck is out. Yeah, you know, I I really wish Christian Bale would have continued on, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I I think he's got to be one of the better ones over you know the past decade or so, and and he he kind of fit the build too, and not that he's necessarily you know not like the comparison with Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. It's not like uh, Christian Bale is Batman, but he he was phenomenal in that role i think he played both sides very well uh because yeah. that's it, it, kind of the thing is there's it's almost like a split personality you're bruce wayne and you're batman yeah yeah there's been a it, it has been tough over the years keeping a batman <laughs> trying to keep a batman uh to continue to be batman um it's it's been like the like a, a plague everyone's trying to get away from it as quick as they can i shouldn't make jokes about the plague uh, <laughs> <laughs> make reference to the plague <laughs> considering the times yeah yeah i'll backtrack think, on that i think dc too is just and we've uh, maddie and i have talked about this before several times is dc just has such trouble with finding like you mentioned before just uh like a villain that really 
uh, just hits home because their superheroes are so powerful yeah. versus when you go to the Marvel universe, that, their superheroes aren't as powerful as DCs are. So yeah. it's kind of difficult to get a villain that actually makes you think, oh, shit, they're in trouble, you know? <laughs> well, well, we've had this conversation, uh, you and I, Rod, and, and uh, I just don't think that they bring all of Superman's um, weaknesses to the forefront. Yeah, vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's vulnerable to magic. Mm-hmm. People don't really talk about that. Yeah, you know, there's the whole issue with the red sun. If he's or uh, the yellow sun, if he's not under a yellow sun, he becomes more exposed. Uh, you know, it's not just the kryptonite avenue. There's a lot of different things. It, it just nobody has exploited those other things. Yeah, yeah, that's that's in in getting someone like a John Favreau who's very busy doing Mandalorian, but he's so good at taking those those things and finding those things in the source material. And being able to create a good story with it, like he's mm-hmm. been able to do in the past, and what what if he could get a hold of a DC movie, John Favreau? Because that would, yeah, <laughs> everything he's done is touched to gold. I mean, he did Iron Man, he launched the Marvel Universe. There's a meme about this. He decided he was going to do a Christmas movie. He made an instant classic in Elf. Um, <laughs> the guy can't even mess up a cooking show. He's got a cooking show on on Netflix, The Chef, mm-hmm. and it's super entertaining to watch. So now I'm giving, you know, John Favreau, uh, you know, a uh, lap dance. Um, <laughs> I hope he, hope he tips me. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you'll be an extra in the next uh, Marvel movie. <laughs> I've run my way into getting a, a, with happy. It's ironic. His character's named happy too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on, on the, on the Iron Man and the Marvel movies. So anyway, yeah. Um, again, I started making a point and I ended up somewhere in the abyss of John Favreau. Oh yeah, I lost you there. <laughs> what a maze of conversation this has been. Uh, I know. <laughs> you know what I? You know what I need is I need. They have this in, in in the NFL. They have a guy who, for some coaches, is assigned just to pull them back when they get over on the they they, they get past the line, and they yeah. run yeah. out. I know the Rams coach does this. He's got a guy that's paid, which hey, I'll take that gig. I'm sure it pays well. Just grabbing the guy and pulling him back into the the sideline, and he probably gets fifty k to just to do that. Well, well, they had that that position is probably required now. Back when Mike Tomlin stepped on the field and tripped that guy on a punt return or whatever it was, so. <laughs> yes, probably what created the position. It created jobs, though. Thanks, thanks to him, he created. Yeah. He That's created right. In the U.S., he created jobs. Anytime you can create jobs in the U.S., it's a good thing. So. Uh, so. I I need someone like that for podcasting. I need someone that's there in the studio with me, and they grab me whenever <laughs> back, whenever I start to get off off the, the topic that I started in. Um, anyway, I know, uh, and this has been a great, this is a, this is the kind of thing you could do a podcast just on this discussion, Marvel versus DC, because you could take Easily. on different, different segments of it and you could do a different, ep- I mean, you could go on and do at least a, a couple of seasons of a podcast just on the Marvel DC thing versus DC. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you guys about your podcast. You do. You're based out of Ohio. You're in Columbus area. You. I've been doing the podcast just for a little while now, but you've got uh, several episodes up on all the places where you get your podcast, as they say. What inspired you to decide that you wanted to get together and do a do a pod podcast? So, uh, idiots on a mic was formulated. We we're. I mean, we, we used to live together. Mm-hmm. And it, it was, was our love kinda, child. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what happens. Uh, <laughs> no, we just kind of came together, and I, I I think for both of us, uh, you know, humor and, and comedy is a, a very valuable thing. You know, especially mm-hmm. in you, you look at a lot of the turmoil that that has taken place this year. Uh, you know, with with even even with COVID and and what it's kind of created, but also with uh, the some of the racial and, and social injustice tension that has gone on. Um, so, you know, it was kind of one of those things where we were sitting down and, you know, we at least feel like we've had a a lot of entertaining conversation between the two of us. And it's like, Hey, let's, you know what, let's, let's give this to people, you know, come along, sit with us. It's just, you know, it's two idiots on, on microphones, uh, having some conversation, some normal conversation. We're just two, two dudes. And, uh, I, I think that's kind of what makes it relatable and, and it allows us to, to, to reach out to other people and hopefully give them some, some humor in a, a crazy world that we're in now. 
do you uh do you take a do you have a topic per each episode or do you just go in randomly on whatever is on your mind yeah we we kind of run so throughout the week i'll just kind of come up with a, a list of questions that i'll, I'll send off to rod and Sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a couple of days before. Sometimes it's an hour before. But I can guarantee he's not going to look at them till seconds before the episode <laughs> starts. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, we just kind of run with a little bit of everything. You know, we we started to kind of narrow it down to to different topics. You know, we we actually just did a, a superheroes episode not too long ago. You know, actually our our latest episode was superheroes. Um, so it's it's kind of how we're feeling you know i i like the variety and being able to bring a lot of different conversation and we we, we always try to get the people involved you know we come talk to us <laughs> <laughs> do you bring on guests or is it just the two guys or is it a little bit of both yeah we we've brought on some guests uh you know we want to help other people promote too as as we start to gain traction so uh, we have a friend who is a, a local author, so we brought her on and, and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of give them their, their spotlight and then we'll bring them to our side of the world <laughs> where it's, oh. it's dumb questions and silly answers and, and that's what you get. But, uh, yeah, we've had a handful of guests. Um, so we had a local author we've had, uh, what else we actually we had? just had a uh, really good, uh, engagement from, one of the guys we interviewed, he actually owns like a CBD company and uh, like a podiatry oh, yeah. business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were raising money for cancer and we ended up getting $500 for it. And oh, from his you. business, he actually matched it. Matched our donation. Yeah. Matched our donations. And it uh, just phenomenal. That's amazing. Great, great, uh, great news for sure. It yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love that. that's great news. Yeah, absolutely. And is there a place if people wanted to still donate to that? Is that still something that's available? Like, is there a link somewhere on so, the internet? Yeah. So I actually decided to extend it for another week. So it's going to be running until November 7th uh, because we gained traction pretty early on it. We ended up raising the money and it, and it kind of pan, you know, kind of flattened out a little bit. So I wanted to see if we can get some more engagement. But if you go to our idiots on a mic, facebook page uh mike spelled m-i-c um there there is a link on there that you can you can still go ahead and click on and donate and it's it's for the american cancer society super easy to find to their page like i said literally you just type that in just as he said it uh it comes up you'll see your pictures there uh on uh on the front page so you'll see it it'll be easy to find um what uh we were talking before that we started recording. You're all were asking about live streaming and doing video. Do you think you could see yourself wanting to do something like this with your podcast or do you like to keep it simple? We actually started talking about doing, uh, because we'll, we'll go live to promote the videos, just keep kind of um, our fans kind of engaged what's going on. If we have a giveaway, what the upcoming episode is. Um, and we talked about maybe doing once a month, trying to figure out how to do a live stream on Facebook, uh, just to kind of get it out there and see kind of how that would work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of dip your toes in a little bit. Um, absolutely. We started, I started lives same way, just doing, I will do I did Instagram lives and we just talked to people like uh, give me questions on, on live and I would read what's going on in the news and then talk about it. And, and we still do those kind of more organic, rougher, mm -hmm. you know, like looser um, types of live live streams. Um, all right. We're going to dive into the segment. That we call agree or disagree on this 131st episode of the Thunder Pop podcast. So I've got some music here. Our agree or disagree background music. In this episode 131 from the Idiots on a Mic podcast, Maddie and Rod, we're going to have two tonight, two questions, and they agree or disagree. I want to ask you first. Dexter 2 or Dexter, Dexter 2. Dexter's return <laughs> is Dexter 2 because it's the second time they've done Dexter. Dexter's coming back. They've announced they're going to do a kind of a limited series run, I suppose, where it's going to come back for one standalone season. Um, and this is the beauty of television in 2020. Nothing goes away forever. Mm -hmm. you, could, you, could, you could have a show that runs for nine years, 
goes away. It's happened now multiple times. We've seen it with X Files. We saw it with, uh, to a lesser degree, with Roseanne. That didn't end so well. <laughs> Roseanne. It started off great, but it didn't end so well for Roseanne. Uh, and there's been a plethora of others. Uh, Will and Grace came back. They're still talking about Miami Vice, the original Miami Vice coming back with the original people. Uh, I'm sure with, Friends will be coming back eventually. <laughs> friends probably as long as the, as soon as the check gets big enough. Yeah. Friends, mm-hmm. Coming back, they are going to get together and do a reunion, but it's just going to be them with them sitting around talking. And I don't mm-hmm. know if that's they'll do, that's, they'll do a podcast. They're going to have a <laughs> podcast that probably already exists because there's some yeah. cast members of the office that do like an office. The women of the office, I believe, yeah. is something something along those lines is what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah, and and Dwight, the actor that played that, not Dwight, but the actor that plays Dwight, does a Facebook show. Of course, during COVID. Everybody launched a Facebook or Instagram or YouTube show of some kind um, or wrote a book and started promoting it because it's all you could do. You were stuck at home, so you had to do something at home. Um, But anyway, my question for you is Dexter announced it's coming back. Is this going to be a success or is this going to be kind of like where Dexter should have stopped while he was ahead? Is there still good more? Is there still good, more good material to take the Dexter story a little bit further. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, start this one off because I don't know how much Maddie's actually watch of Dexter, but so you agree in the wife, I should say. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I agree. I agree. They should keep it up because uh, so far I haven't fit completely finished it, but I think we're four or five seasons in and it's phenomenal still. And they keep finding new ways, you know, new ways to incorporate, you know, what he's doing and oh, keeping that tension of, oh, he might get caught at any moment. And uh, yeah, I think that as long as they can keep that feeling going. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I'm going to say agree as well. I, I I have yet to watch the show admittedly, but uh, from all the speculation that's been around me and and how incredibly uh, well put together the show is and and some of the tension that they create with the character um, just by my own fault, I haven't haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet. But if Shame. I, I think if they're smart and they do the, the limited series proper to where it's, you know, kind of either like a pickup where they left off or, you know, a you know, a few years down the road continuation kind of thing, then I could absolutely see that succeeding and, and you know, eventually I have to get around. It's gonna be on the list. I'll download it, download some episodes mm-hmm. for the flight back to Ohio so I can watch it tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. It's good stuff to watch. Well, I've, I've been watching shows on long flights and that's how I got started on the show. Barry, which is now one of my favorite shows on television. Uh, if you were looking for a new show, if you haven't watched Barry, check it out sometime. Yeah, I need to. That's the, that's the HBO show where he's a, like, he's like a spy slash actor yeah. kind of deal. Right. Yeah. 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 I won't give too much away, but he's a hitman slash actor. Yeah. 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 Ooh, yeah. That sounds delightful. <laughs> and it's one of the shows where everybody is brilliant on that show. Like there is no weak, weak link. I, I like Bill Hader. I think what he's done to go from, you know, like the small screen when he did like, he was, it was, he, he was, was it SNL or mad TV that he was yeah, part of SNL. SNL. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to kind of take some, he took some smaller roles. You saw him as, you know, like the, the buddy cop in uh super bad. And when they, yeah. you know, he had that, and he's kind of really filled into his own and, and taken mm-hmm. himself out of that just a strictly comedy role, which Barry, from from what I understand, has some comedic value to it still. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, he's fulfilling a, a more you know spotlighted role going forward. So I, I love it. Yeah. So I know I trust what they're doing with Dexter because I'll tell you why. Nowadays, they're really smart. They're not reckless about most of these these revitalizations or sequel series. They get into writing rooms. I know Frazier, they've been trying to bring Frazier back for a while, but they're taking their time with it. They get into a writing room. They bring in a bunch of writers. They have a think tank on how would, how do you want to approach it? And guys, you know, and, and people, ladies and guys, they contribute their ideas and they put it all in a bowl and they, they really are methodical about it before they move ahead. And if there's no good ideas, you know, years ago, um, they wanted, you know, they wanted to do a, a good t- good times was a big show back in the seventies. It was Norman, uh, Norman Lear series. Um, so it came from that same kind of family as, as uh, the Jeffersons and shows like that. They wanted to do uh, Janet Jackson got her start acting start 
before she did the Nutty Professor movies and all that stuff from Good Times. So as a little girl. So they wanted to come back and do like years later, like in the 90s, do a Good Times reunion. And they all got together in a meeting room. They're like, nah, it's not going to work. So sometimes that happens. So if you see shows that don't make it back, it, it, they probably discussed it, had meetings about it. But in the case of Dexter, I trusted that they got into a writing room and they 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 they, they took mm -hmm. time to think and see if there was something there before they even started. So they must have really had inspired and a good idea and said, this is how we'll approach it. So I'll, I trust it. I trust it. Um, second question, Thor. Love and Thunder movie is in the is in is in a uh, production right now they're actually already shooting in australia um so very exciting they're going to be bringing thor back it was uh natalie portman has said that this movie is going to be really silly and funny in a great way now you know thor ragnarok was really mm -hmm. silly and funny especially thanks to people like jeff goldblum um uh, <laughs> contributing his his uh efforts to that film do you think, though, doing another film that's silly and funny is going to be just too much? Like, sh is it time to shift the tone? Do you agree or disagree with that? You first, buddy. Uh, no, I don't. I think I think a lot of the success that Marvel has, has built their foundation on has come from a comedic value. And you didn't see it so much early on with Iron Man kind of had their quips here and there. But uh, I... I I loved what they did with Thor Ragnarok and I think they're they're finally playing to the abilities of Chris Hemsworth and not only you know because for me personally the first two Thor movies stunk I you know I, I wasn't really invested I mean, I yeah I wasn't I wasn't entirely invested in that character now being a Marvel fan I you know I, I stuck through it and then what they did with um, with Thor Ragnarok I thought was incredible uh, the production values seem to shift, you know, a complete 180 in what they were trying to accomplish. And I, I think the success for that one is, is the route that they need to continue to take because uh, it kind of hits all different demographics. You have, you know, the, the Marvel fan who goes to see the Thor movie, you have, um, you know, people who think, Chris Hemsworth is just a beautiful human being and want to go see that. Uh, and then you have the comedic value of it. So people who don't even necessarily care about the, the Marvel character Thor itself, they see that there's a lot of, a lot of humor in it and they can still enjoy it and, and get some value from it. It would be hilarious is Chris Hemsworth and Jason Momoa in a buddy cop film. That would be I, <laughs> yes. Yes, that would. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> we get you get the ladies right away in for that. Mm -hmm, for All sure. The ladies are on board and and men too. So oh, he, he, I'll yeah. be there. <laughs> it, I mean they're they're dudes. They're dudes that dudes like. So there you go. That's a blockbuster. Make that let's you can cut me a check and send it to me tomorrow. Make it happen. <laughs> now, I I want each of them to make references about like the other person's superhero like persona like exactly. like uh, Chris Chris Hemsworth like making fish jokes to Jason Momoa and like Jason Momoa making like sparkles jokes to Chris Hemsworth. I love it. All right, th those those two can be the buddy cop, but only if Jeff Goldblum can be their captain. Yeah, bingo. Because. If you haven't seen the world according to Jeff Goldblum, you're wrong. It is <laughs> magnificent on Disney Plus. Yes. You no, know, I've seen it, but I've always passed through it. I should yeah. give that a look. So give yes. it a whirl. So so his character in Thor Ragnarok <laughs> is Jeff Goldblum. I mean that's who is, he is normally. It's, it's his persona. And all the world according to Jeff Goldblum is is each episode is specific to like the first episode, I think, is shoes. Mm -hmm. It's just the world of shoes, like how they design them. Oh, this, mm. I'm, I'm on board. I'm going to go watch it mm. right now. Yeah. 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 Mm. Mandalorian's coming out like at 3 a.m., but I'm going to watch this before I watch Mandalorian after you told me that. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. so and it, it, They're little like half hour episodes. I think there's only one season so far. I don't know if they plan mm -hmm. to continue it or not, but I mean, it's it's a beautiful show. It's, it's him, mm -hmm. you know, just describing these different aspects of a certain, whether it's a, like a certain market with like with shoes or pools, I think was one too. Pools like food, jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tattoos. He did tattoos. Yeah. Do I have a tattoo? Hmm. I'll never tell. I'll never tell. Oh, <laughs> sold. Uh, 
who sold me on that show for sure. <laughs> um, we got a, we're going to wrap up with, so Thor four agree on it. It's the right approach. We're we're on. We're oh, on yeah. That. yeah. Okay. We're going to dive into my thoughts and advice to close out the 131st episode of the Thunder Pop podcast and the Thunder Pop live stream. And I can't think of whatever else to attach. Before I get into that, though, I want to bring in some of our comments that we missed earlier. Uh, Mr. Tester, who was with us, and by the way, he told me, and I, I correct myself, uh, I just got a little ahead of myself. He's not from the UK, he's in the Netherlands. Uh, oh, so I apologize, but he has already gone to bed, so I'll have to tell him. I'm sorry tomorrow. <laughs> Got to go. It's 3 a.m. Time for bed. I totally agree with him on that. If it's 3 a.m., 3.40 a.m., sorry, it's time for bed. But he came back in later, and he's talked about, um, he said, I'm betting on to that Tom Welling will reprise Clark Kent or even Superman for the Flash movie. Tom Welling, of course, being the Smallville Superman. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura Vandervoort, who played Supergirl, Supergirl on Smallville, accidentally hinted on it during a zoom interesting Ooh. so that's interesting so that that's uh that's being uh, talked about there um i've heard i've heard some whispers of that so that's good uh he also said i have the spider-man tv show from the 70s on my <laughs> server he, 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 mischievously with a laugh there um and we go up we're gonna go up here we got oh we got a lot of comments i love it i love it uh also Andrew Cecil Robertson, who is in the UK, and I'm sure of it this time. <laughs> DC used to rule TV and film. Some of the older Superman and Batman films are classics, an unpopular opinion, but I rather enjoy the 1984 Supergirl movie. Uh, I know the movie's talking about the 1984 Supergirl movie. I actually enjoyed it too. I'll be I'll be honest with you. It was one of the it was a it didn't do so well, but I did enjoy it. Uh, in the case of uh, DC, he's right. It with the 60s uh, through the 80s, DC dominated. It wasn't until the 90s that it started to kind of shift over to Marvel. Um, and really not even until the, the mid to late 90s before it started to shift. And I think the shift started to happen with X-Men, from what I, what I recall. Uh, but See, what I like too is, I mean, you kind of talk about some of the, the older shows. Like, they reprised The Flash. They brought him into the the flash that we know now where he's like the alternate universe flash or or you know however they describe him there at one point he's jay garrick and it's not jay garrick and then there's that whole that whole story arc the main uh, different flash <laughs> and then and then doing the same thing with with tom welling i mean tom welling in in terms of the more recent uh comprehension of the the character in tv shows they've I mean, they're they're allowing him to kind of reprise that role. So I th I think they certainly pay homage to you know where they started and and bringing uh -huh. those characters back that had success for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, legendary Laura, who was over on YouTube, said, "I took my daughter to a Kiss cover, socially distanced show. Uh, I'm assuming she means Kiss the cover, the, the band Kiss. Mm. Um, that wears the makeup and the the uh, platform boot, but a kiss cover band, socially co distanced show. We wore our masks the whole time and she got sick from another kid. Go figure. <laughs> Kids are still germ factories with masks. Um, I'm wondering if it was just sick, sick, or if it was COVID sick, um, that she's, she's, I can't, I'm trying to derive whether that was, uh, just sick or COVID sick. What do you think? What do you guys think she meant there? Uh, I, I'm saying I'm saying just sick, yeah. Yeah, I think she would have said she got COVID at that point. And yeah. I mean, I I cannot stress enough, and this goes for our show too, that when we talk about COVID stuff like that, we are not taking away from the seriousness of it or from Absolutely. the lethality of it. Yeah. Um, we're just trying to not be as dark as the world is today, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're trying to portray. So we're not taking away from yeah. anything, any seriousness or anything like that. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I brought that up as well uh, that mm -hmm. you know, we're, we do, you know, especially with, in the case where I are very focused on a certain aspect, we do, you know, pop culture, movie, TV. Mm -hmm. um, so from our perspective of what we do, we talk about, Oh, bummer, movie theaters closed or, Oh, everybody's streaming now. And that's because that's we're, we're covering things from that perspective. There's other people that do a much better job on the seriousness of it, the health mm -hmm. aspects, the health risk, the the political aspects but all that stuff 
there's other people that do a much better job than I could do with that <laughs> aspect of it. So I'm going to let them do that, that, and I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the, that's uh, right. <laughs> the, over here, the escapism to a certain degree that people also need. Uh, and of course mm -hmm. I know we'll say the escapism is the problem nowadays that too many people are dived into that's, but that's a whole other argument. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm here to cover things from that one little bubble I'm in and that aspect of things. And also, like you said, yeah, we make jokes, but it's also because somebody's trying to make, we're trying to laugh so we don't cry. Put a little light yeah. in yeah. a world full of darkness, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. There's enough of that stuff going on. There's enough of it. Um, uh, oh, Laura said, bring in the sound effects. I remember us discussing, Laura Bennett over on Facebook said, bring in the sound effects. Laura is a friend of mine. She said, bring the sound effects. I remember us discussing that. Yeah, I told her <laughs> that I was going to bring in sound effects. I've been getting so used to all this new stuff, and including using the soundboard, that I didn't use it quite as much in the, the first couple of live streams, but I, I incorporated it more in this episode, like with stuff like uh, uh, this. And what else do we have? Oh, the uh, this would have been good for this episode. DC rumors in your face. Ooh. <laughs> oh. DC rumors in your face. Well, we got some gossip about DC. We can play that. Uh, I don't want to leave anybody out. I know I had a few more. I'm going to see if I got anybody else. Uh, oh, this was this was one's very important. I've got one more. Want to become famous? <laughs> I follow. Primes and views on big follows. Star Sound, sounds legit. What's that? Sounds legit. And we'll yeah exactly. And we'll spam the hell out of everything you own. <laughs> we'll 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 derive anything that's in your bank account, and we'll take your identity. And we'll uh, we'll spam your email accounts, everything. Social media will be deleted. We'll ruin your life in the process. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I'll help them find the money that's in my bank account. <laughs> yeah. We'll be scraping the bottom of the safe barrel. Just make it a little easier on them, just so they yeah. don't work. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, speaking of tomfoolery and pranks, Oh, Tom Fullery. I'm glad someone else uses that word. You use it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, ha I have regret not naming my podcast Tom Fullery. See? The Tom Fullery Show. Well, that's much more elegant than idiots on a mic, so. <laughs> <laughs> you guys may be rebranding by next week after this. <laughs> uh, possibly, possibly, yeah. It's going to be Tom Fullery on a mic or the yeah. Tom Fullery Show. Uh, I like it. Well, Tom Fullery. So prank shows have been a big thing for a long time. I mean, they go back to Candid Camera with uh, what was done back as far back as the 60s with Candid Camera. Um, you had Tom Green's show, of course, which was huge at one time. And he's talked about revitalizing the Tom Green show. Uh, Jackass, more recently. Bam, uh, which was a spinoff of the Jackass. By the way, we're doing another Jackass movie. Jackass is coming back for one more movie. Supposedly, this is ridiculous, but supposedly the next Jackass movie is going to be a handoff to the younger generation of Jackassery. I was about to say, how much more can their bodies take? Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently they're going to work that into the uh, into the movie. I was going to say, I can't say plot because there's not really a plot in the Jackass oh, movie. Uh, it's a it Doc's a reality show um of sorts but they're they're going to work kind of be honest to their age and they're going to make fun of the fact that it's a lot harder for them to do those stunts now mm -hmm. and especially you got to think about how their bodies have already been abused over the years doing the stunts so not only do they have the factor of age you know i guess most of them now are probably in their 40s i'm guessing in, in the case of uh johnny knoxville he might be close to 50 now i'm not for sure and he's in, definitely in great shape but i think he's he might be pushing 50 so or he just looks like he's 50 because of all the cigarette smoking because i think <laughs> yeah he smoke like a train so he looked yeah. kind of old in the face when you yeah. get close to him he's one of those people that they would do the makeup and the good lighting but then when you saw him out in person you were like yeah. is that his dad <laughs> that, that, that just, anyway, no, we love Johnny Knoxville. We love Jackass. I was a huge fan. But wasn't he taped to a billboard recently? <laughs> he did, yeah, he was promoting his new movie, and he uh, ended up oh, duct taking know. himself to a billboard. I believe it was in Los Angeles, and they had the fire department out there. It was all over Instagram at one point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, look, still up to his old shenanigans, isn't he? <laughs> shenanigans is another one, by the way. If you want to yeah. get into the words, Tom Fullery shenanigans. <laughs> so. Uh, now, more recently, Sasha Baron Cohen, 
who's had a the 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 Borat movies, Bruno. Mm-hmm. Um, he put out what else? Uh, he's he's done the TV show Ali G. He's had a more recent TV show where he does the interviews and pranks. He pisses the people off sometimes. He did a thing on the new Borat movie where he went in and they set this woman up who's in her sixties who was a babysitter, and she thought the whole thing was real. She was told the scenario was I'll set it up for you. She was told that she was going to be in a documentary that was for women empowerment. And she was going to be taking care of this 15 year old girl whose dad was very sexist and wanted her to get a boob job so she could find a man and thought that was okay for a 15. So she thought this was all real. Mm -hmm. She had no idea who Sasha Baron Cohen was. She didn't get that. It was a put on with Borat. So she was very, uh, she felt very hurt that she was felt used in the situation. Uh, I just read though, and it's poor, poor 60 years. Somebody's grandma's like 60. And she's, she's the most likable character or, or person in the, I watched the movie a couple of days ago. She's the most likable person in the movie. So I felt bad for her. <laughs> that she was getting punked in this movie. I hope she got paid. I heard that she, there's actually been fundraising for her online and they already fundraised $60,000. Now I don't know if she was hurting financially but for some reason, there was a fundraiser for her online. They raised sixty thousand dollars already for this lady. Um, so anyway, anyway, she was very. Her feelings were hurt because she really tries to become a a stepmom to this this character, this girl who's playing Borat's daughter in the movie. And I don't want to give spoilers, but she was really a sweet character because she mm-hmm. really is becoming kind of a, a trying to be a role model to her. And help her kind of break from the chains of her dad's ways, Marat's ways. So I'm like, damn, those those pranksters, they punk someone again. And this time it's kind of starting to feel personal because they got somebody, they got this old lady, a sweet lady. So here's my thought. And sometimes the pranks are great. I love it when they get people that deserve it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you get, if you prank a Karen, in fact, yeah. it should be a show just for pranking Karen's. Like we can call like let's get a Karen or the like uh time to get Karen or something like that. <laughs> and it's all about but here's the thing. I want to do a show where it's pranking the pranksters. Do it, it could be a limited series, but you can go find the greatest pranksters of all time. And the goal is is to punk the pranksters. How many people would love to finally see the tables turned on t- on Sasha Baron Cohen and and even Jimmy Kimmel, who punks people on, on his late night talk show. Uh, but turn the table on them once and once, once and for all. Would you know what? Be- I'm I'm starting to see that you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you the title as the good idea fairy because you have <laughs> a lot of good ideas. <laughs> this should have been my show. I should have just called it the good I- good idea fairy. No, thank just you. See, you <laughs> but the thing is, somebody in Hollywood's with a if if this gets on anybody's oh yeah screen in Hollywood, they're writing the stuff down and they're not right. writing me a check. No. So, yeah. So, so this is what we do on our show. We just shout TM, 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 TM a bunch of times of trademark, uh, in hopes that like, <laughs> that works, I, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that's just how, it, uh, how you're supposed to do I think it. It totally I, works. I think it totally can be, <laughs> can totally work. I may have been ripped off before and I, I don't want to get into it cause it's a whole tangent, but I had a web series years ago and I've one of these days I'm going to dive into that, just that on the, sh- on this show. Cause I had, I wanted to do a show with just people that had been ripped off and they talk. Cause I, I know people that have had like ideas they came up with and they designed a t-shirt and then hot topic or whatever, not maybe not hot topic, but some store started printing the shirt and didn't give them any credit for it. Didn't pay him for it. So it's happened. It had, I know a guy it was a neighbor of a friend who claims he wrote rain man. So, you know, so what happens, you know, ideas, sometimes it's legit. People just have the same ideas mm-hmm. and other times things really do get stolen. So I do, I do believe that it may, yeah. it may have been coincidence in my case. Maybe I wasn't ripped off. I don't know. I, I'm anticipating. Uh, so, so our little thing is we don't call it the windy city. We don't call Chicago, the windy city. We call it gusty town. Uh, so the gusty so town, I'm, brown bears. Yeah. Gusty <laughs> town, brown bears. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for uh, the Chicago bears to actually go ahead and, and run that as a promotion. I've, uh, we will know with certainty that that was ours. <laughs> That's one you can't. No, you can't, no, no, it can't be a coincidence. No, 
absolutely not. There's there's no way. Man, guys, I want to thank you. Matty Ice, Rod, from the Idiots on a Mic podcast. And I said it right. <laughs> Wherever normal people listen to their podcast. That's, that's our right. motto. That's our motto. <laughs> you go find them. Go to their podcast. I want to thank you guys. This is fun. No, I've had a great time. You guys were great. Uh, I hope I can convince you or, or bribe you into coming on again sometime. Tell us when. Awesome. And we can have some more of this burnt popcorn over here. And and <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll figure out how we can do this, this effect where we can make it look like I'm reaching over, <laughs> and like grabbing, like uh, you, you're handing me a beer from then I can. Oh, back. there's an oh, idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah, definitely yeah. do that. <laughs> I think that's cool. what we do is we would do some kind of uh, like trickery with the. Uh, you know some tomfoolery yeah. if you will tomfoolery <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know we could make make this and then i could you know or if, if you want if you wanted to you could reach up and, and slap your partners on the yeah. head and say hey i'm talking i just want to push a screen down that's all i want to do yeah <laughs> so that would be okay we're gonna work on this andrew if you're still out there <laughs> your layout way to do this in a layout he's the one that makes my layouts for me andrew cecil robertson who was in here earlier and had a good point about the DC and Marvel. Okay, everyone, everybody out there in live stream podcast land. I want to thank everyone for joining us that came in on our chat. Y'all were great. Uh, everybody have a good day. Our second millisecond, as we say all the time on this, this show and catch our socials at Facebook, Thunderpop TV on Twitter, Thunderpop TV on YouTube, Instagram, Thunderpop TV, TikTok, Thunderpop TV, and then our actual website. And yes, there we go. <laughs> our uh, help there for uh, nobody sees you <laughs> guiding you through that. And uh, <laughs> everybody, as Matthew McConaughey would say, "All right, all right." That was terrifying. That is <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah, Halloween terror. <laughs> yeah, I've got one actually. I haven't even put it into my folder and used it yet, but where he just goes nonstop. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the horror terror of McConaughey isms. All right, everyone, have a good night. Thank you so much. We're out. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>